On December 12th, the 6'2", 250 pound former Muay Thai champion, Cyril Gan is taking on the UFC's former heavyweight champion, Junior Dos Santos. Cyril Gan has had his last four fights canceled. One of those fights were canceled due to Cyril suffering from pneumonia, which would lead to a collapsed lung. Then, he was slated to face Ante Dilia on Fight Island. But, the UFC found out his opponent was still under contract with the PFL, so they pulled the fight. Two pretty unique cancellations to say the least. But, this most recent fight cancellation may have been a blessing in disguise, because now he's slated to face former heavyweight champion Junior Dos Santos. Very few fighters can overcome what Junior Dos Santos has overcome physically and mentally inside that octagon. Literally every single one of his fights since 2008 has ended in either a knockout, whether it be a win or a loss, or a five round main event decision, whether it be a win or a loss. That's an incredible amount of stress on this man's body and mind, because as you know, not only does he have to fight the fight, he also has to train for five round main events for 12 years straight, which is pretty much like more work than all of us have done in our entire life combined. So, now that you know a bit about both of these two fighters, we're gonna take a look at their most recent fights so we could try to form an educated opinion on who's gonna win their fight on December 12th. If you guys have an opinion on how this fight is gonna play out, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. And remember, if you wanna stay up to date with the latest MMA prospect news that no other MMA media outlets are covering, make sure you subscribe to MMA Underground today. All right, so before we jump into the fight footage, there's a couple of general facts that are gonna help us predict what's going to happen when they fight. First, we should note that Cyril Gaon is one of Francis Ngannou's main training partners over at the MMA factory. Ngannou, of course, knocked out Junior Dos Santos in mid-2019. This doesn't guarantee the same result, but it is worth noting that they train together and are relatively the same size and of similar skill sets. The second thing that you should know is, as I mentioned earlier, Cyril is a former Muay Thai champion with only six MMA fights, three of which have come in the UFC. Thus far, none of his opponents have had substantial wrestling or jiu-jitsu credentials. And while Junior Dos Santos doesn't have any submissions or very many attempted takedowns on his record, he is still a BJJ black belt. All right, so for each fighter, we're gonna take a look at their most recent three fights. Three fights ago, Cyril Gaon took on Rafael Pessoa, who was also making his UFC debut. So, while this was a UFC fight, it wasn't against proven UFC talent. Furthermore, Pessoa would go on to go one and two in the UFC, and that one guy he beat, Jeff Hughes, did even worse. He was zero, three, and one. From the first round of this fight, you can tell that Cyril Gaon has a cerebral and often counter-striking approach. He likely recognizes that his opponent is a big and wild swinger, and he's using this first round to accumulate data and also let his opponent tire himself out. Overall, the first round was pretty uneventful on the feet, with Cyril landing some pop shot jabs and lead leg kicks from the outside. The first real noteworthy piece of footage from this fight comes in this clinch exchange during the first round. Pessoa is able to score this trip on Cyril pretty easily, although momentum would land Cyril on top, where he'd quickly submit the guy that Michael Bisping just told us did jiu-jitsu for 12 years and was quote-unquote high level. He needs to try and take him to the floor. He's done jiu-jitsu since 2006, that's 13 years, so he's at a high level. Now, because I'm doing a much longer career breakdown on Cyril Gaon, I happen to know about this clip from his first professional fight. And while we can't conclude anything 100% based on these two isolated clips, it does raise the question of how good he could defend takedowns from the clinch. When we look at Junior's fight tape, we'll see. Does he show, does he exhibit any takedown tendencies from the clinch? And if he does, this could be an easy win for Junior, but we'll check that out once we get there. Let's jump into Cyril's second fight in the UFC against Dante Mays. One of the first things that jumps out to me about Cyril in this fight is his ability to lunge in and out of range to deliver his jab 
and his strength from the outside. Secondly, he shows that he's intelligently avoiding incoming strikes, which should be no surprise given his striking background. For the remainder of the first round, Cyril shows that he knows how to hit and not get hit, consistently getting in and out without his opponent laying a paw on him. Check out these roundhouse kicks and teep kicks that land near the end of the first round. Cyril would end the first round by countering his opponent in this boxing exchange, and this is the kind of exchange that'll be useful footage for his fight against Junior Dos Santos, because Junior is primarily a boxing striker who's proven he's vulnerable to getting countered in these exchanges. The second round would be more striking from the outside from Gon with some nice counter punching exchanges as well. And while there were certainly more noticeable exchanges in this fight besides the one you were just shown, this pretty much tells the story of this fight. This fight would end after Cyril lands a nasty body kick that sends Dantel Mays retreating. Cyril is letting knees go to the body and legs while his opponent focuses on keeping his hand on the mat to prevent knees to the head. Ironically, Cyril would finish this fight via heel hook, and while this is impressive, I don't think this will be happening against Junior Dos Santos. And look, let's keep it real again. Was this performance very impressive? Sure it was, but Dantel Mays is not a high-level striker. In Cyril's next fight, he would face his toughest opposition yet in Tanner Boser. While this is his most experienced and skilled opponent with a record of 19 and 7, I'm going to keep it real again and let you know that most of these wins came on the regional circuit and when he stepped up to the UFC, he fought other fighters that were brand new to the UFC and would likely qualify more as regional talent themselves. In this fight, Tanner's coming close when he attempts to throw this power right hand over the jab of Cyril. Ironically, this is how Junior Dos Santos knocked out Cain Velasquez back in the day. Cyril uses his jab in this fight from the outside to disguise incoming straight rights and uppercuts. He throws a few uppercuts in this fight that if they were to land, they could have well produced a viral knockout like in Ganu vs. Ovary. Another thing that we can ascertain from this fight is that Cyril doesn't gas out when he's in a quote unquote real fight. Cyril doesn't show any signs of breathing heavy or slowing down heading into the third round. Cyril goes on to win this fight by unanimous decision. What do you guys think about this assessment? Let me know in the comments. Now, let's get to breaking down Junior Dos Santos' last three fights. Three fights ago, Junior Dos Santos went up against Francis Ngannou, who is Cyril Gan's training partner and has a similar size and game plan. Francis would land a few powerful leg kicks before Junior stumbled him with a leg kick of his own. During one of the first boxing exchanges, Junior missed with this big right hand, and all it would take is one counter from Francis to end things. And while I would encourage you to not look too deeply into any one fight when trying to predict another fight, this does seem relevant because Cyril is not only Francis' training partner, but has similar strengths and a similar size. So it's not far-fetched to think that Cyril's fight may end similarly to this fight. So we're not gonna overreact to this fight, but instead we're gonna jump into his next fight, which was two fights ago, against Curtis Blades. Through watching his fight with Curtis Blades, we can clearly see at this point of his career, his speed, his power, his conditioning, and his fight IQ are still with him. However, at the end of this first round, we start to see Curtis Blades connecting more and more up top. During the broadcast, Daniel Cormier several times pointed out the fact that Junior was throwing this rear uppercut, and just as he says it for about the third time, Junior gets knocked out while throwing a rear uppercut. This would make it two knockouts in a row for Junior Dos Santos, and it would be easy to say his chin is shot or that he's aged, but honestly, that's not what I saw in these two fights. In the first fight, he got clipped by one of the most powerful strikers in the last hundred years. And in the second fight, he made a tactical error of throwing a rear uppercut in which he got caught by another really powerful heavyweight. So, although he lost by two knockouts in a row, I'm not ready to say he shot or that his chin is gone just yet. In fact, he looked like he's maintained most of the skills that's got him to the dance thus far. Alright, so let's move on to Junior's most recent fight against Jairzinho Rosenstrike. 
After we break this fight down, then we're going to compare what we've learned and see who we think would win in this fight coming up on Saturday. Rosenstrike is the most relevant tape to study as it relates to this fight coming up on Saturday because like Cyril, he's an experienced kickboxer. In fact, even more so. His kickboxing record is 76, 8, and 1, which pretty much speaks for itself. Since starting MMA, he's 10 and 1 with only one decision. This fight starts off with Junior striking from the outside and Rosenstrike countering with leg kicks as he comes in. Both fighters seem to be quick and reactive on their feet. Even after two consecutive KO losses, Junior does not seem to have lost a step mentally or physically. He lands this big overhand right followed by a left hook, and shortly later he's also displaying these lunging jabs and straights to the body. Another big right hand landed in the last minute of this round for Junior. He even attempts this spin kick that scored him the KO versus Mark Hunt, but it doesn't land this time. Junior Dos Santos would go on to get clipped by a big punch at the end of round two and lose his third straight fight by KO. And honestly, again, it would be easy to say that the veteran fighter who lost by three in a row KOs is just shot and that his chin has left the chat. But I'm resisting that temptation because we just watched these fights and Junior looked fast. He looked crisp. He looked skilled and looked to have good fitness and a good game plan, but ultimately in the heavyweight division, as you guys know, you get clipped by one punch and that's the entire fight right there. And as seemingly crazy as this might sound, it really does seem like on three consecutive instances, he just got clipped by that one punch and that's just how the cookie crumbled. So now let's move on to predicting what's going to happen between Cyril and Junior when they meet up this Saturday. And let's use that tape study that we just had to kind of support our assertion. So in order for Cyril to win, he likely wants to keep the fight standing and enter these counter striking exchanges. He's shown the ability to hurt his opponents in these exchanges. And Junior, despite being a BJJ black belt, has shown that he's in no rush to initiate the clinch or take the fight to the floor. And tell me something, if Junior doesn't urgently pursue a takedown or a clinch versus Ganu and Rosenstrike, two even more dangerous and credentialed strikers, then what makes you think he's gonna do this against Cyril Gan? In our tape study, I didn't see Junior prioritize a takedown or a clinch even once. In fact, over his entire career, he only averages 0.3 takedowns per 15 minute fight. That's really low. Lastly, even though Junior didn't seem to have lost his chin to me in his past three fights, I mean, this is a new, a third knockout that was pretty vicious. It wouldn't be far-fetched to believe that maybe his chin has left the chat now after this third knockout. You know what they say, the third time is a charm. So for that reason, I'm going to predict that Junior Dos Santos suffers either his fourth knockout in a row or at the very least a decision loss. And it could, I'm leaning towards a decision loss, honestly, because this fight is only three rounds and Junior's used to fighting five round fights. So maybe he can survive for three rounds, but I don't see him shooting for the takedown or prioritizing the clinch trips, which seems to be his path to victory in this fight. So now it's your turn. After learning what you've learned in this video, I would love to hear from each and every one of you. Let me know what you think of Cyril Gan. Are you high on this prospect? And who do you think is going to win this fight between him and Junior Dos Santos? If there are any upcoming fights that you want me to break down in a similar fashion that I did in this video, make sure to let me know in the comments. And until next time, peace. Oh yeah, remember, if you want news on all the hottest up-and-coming MMA prospects, hit subscribe.